suffer. Every night, I can feel my leg and my arm, even my fingers. Uh. So, High Guardian Spice, you might have heard of it, whether it be from memes or if you were actually crazy enough to watch the show. In my case, I watched the show over a three day period by binging a few episodes a day. Not because I was hooked, but because I just wanted the pain to end faster. After finishing all 12 episodes, I came to the sudden conclusion that High Guardian Spice is frustrating. I say this because, honestly, there was potential. There are some good aspects and ideas here, but they're wasted in a show that doesn't know what it wants to be half the time, looks like it was held together with glue, and has all the subtlety of a kick to the dick. You protected a precious creature, and that let it find its perfect partner. And that matters so much. Yeah! This video won't really be an in-depth review of High Guardian Spice, as there are other way better videos out there detailing that. This is more of a short video of me just giving my thoughts on this show and what it did right and what it did wrong. Oh so very wrong. Also, this video has spoilers. Okay, I'm just gonna get this out of the way now because there are some good things about High Guardian Spice. One of the best things about this show is the relationship between the characters of Snapdragon and Amaryllis and just their personalities in general. Ugh, I'm coming. They seem to be the only people who have dynamic personalities and don't just fall into a single character trope. The show could have easily just have had them as antagonistic bullies and just be done with them, but no, they actually have development and feel like normal people with some actually really sweet moments. Would you still like me if, if I painted my nails? Only if you promise to stick to flattering colors. Be serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're the best characters in the show. I want my spin-off Crunchyroll. You bastard! <laughs> Another character I want to bring up is Parsley. She's a pretty good character, she has some simple characteristics and doesn't feel too in-depth, but in this case she doesn't really need to be. She has clear motivations without being obnoxious about them and she's really entertaining without being annoying and just whenever she's in a scene. We stand short shack. Short, short, shack, short, stack, what the fuck? Olive and Mandrake made for some entertaining villains, and that's all I really have to say about them. Although, I really do wish Mandrake was in it more, because honestly, he just reminds me of a catchy in his Black Mask persona, and it's just really entertaining. I love watching that. Slime Dragon and Parnell are perfect. That's it. I don't want to hear a bad word against them. They're great. So then, he poured frozen peas down my shirt. He poured frozen peas down your shirt. Made up of meanness now on to the rest. This is a deep gotta buy it. Excluding Parsley, because she's great, the main characters feel like half-developed concepts and are just thought out really poorly. Rosemary is a hot-headed yet clumsy girl who wants to be a hero. She's a big eater, a little insensitive, and has a mother who disappeared when she was a kid because she left on a mission and never came back. Where have we heard this before? Thanks, Mom. My sweet girl, you've done well. I've missed you so much. Oh, Professor- Plus, you killed a child. Amazing. Mission complete. That right there is why you're the best, boss. The one and only. My problem with Rosemary is that she doesn't really bring anything new to the table of hot-headed MCs who wants to be heroes. She also doesn't really go through any sort of overarching arc or development throughout the entire show, and while there are hints of her changing and becoming less insensitive and more understanding towards her friends in, like, one episode, it's never really brought up again, and in the next episode, it acts like she never went through this arc in the first place. Overall, Rosemary is serviceable, I guess. She has some moments of development or being interesting, but the showrunners don't seem to want to explore those aspects in depth. Sage is just fucking boring. She doesn't. It doesn't help that she has the most uninteresting visual design out of all the main characters. 
Let me seriously, what the fuck is that? But also the fact that she has actually a great concept for an overarching character arc. A witch who has to conform to using new magic whilst also being confined to using old magic. That has potential for a character moment. And yeah, we do get some moments of her contemplating about using new magic whilst wanting to stick to using old magic. I, I can dig that. But it's just ultimately brushed aside because the show wants to focus on this weird love subplot with Rosemary, Snapdragon, and Sage, which ultimately means diddly squat because the subplot is never resolved. Maybe if there was a season two, although I would not hold my breath on that. She also is part of one of the worst scenes in the show where she condescendingly says to Snapdragon that guy friendship is apparently different from girl friendship and apparently guys don't go through the same issues that girls do and guys can't un understand girl issues and yada 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 just because they're guys. And while this could have been used to actually call out misandry and how horrible it is and prove Sage wrong, it doesn't, the show doesn't go for that, and Sage is never really called out on her bullshit by anyone other than Snapdragon, and even then he seems to forget about it by the end of the episode. Girls and guys and guys and girls and girls and... I'm sick of you talking like that. That's rough, buddy. Time feels like the biggest wasted potential out of them all. She's an elf who has a bad relationship with her mother, but the show doesn't really focus on that all a lot. And she wants to save her homeland of the forest. She's your typical loner character who eventually softens up and becomes friends with the team. You know, stuff we haven't seen before. Now, her motivations of wanting to save her home are there, and the show does actually mainly focus on that when she's on screen. My problem is that we don't really get to know why she wants to save the forest, other than it's what her dad wanted, and it's her home. We're told that she loved living in the forest, but we're never actually shown scenes of her as a child in the forest, enjoying herself or having fun, or really what her family was like before the forest went to shit. There is this one scene where she's a child, but it's mostly just an exposition dump, and we don't really get to see what her child like was child life was like it essentially breaks the whole show don't tell rule and it just makes me wish she was fleshed out more fellas fellas i am so hard the show is being held together with duct tape and glue it seems like it was animated like it wanted to be a youtuber film with constant medium shots that linger on for way too long with little to no variation in the camera shots the show is often just uninteresting to look at because it's just a lot of generic tropes and designs thrown together at a wall just to see what sticks. The character designs range from okay to <gasps> Again, there seems to be nothing that's all that original. I should count this as original. It's not awful, but it just leaves a lot to be desired. Maybe you're not the big boss we hope for after all. The show feels like it doesn't know what its target audience is. At first glance, it looks like a kid's cartoon, but it can't be because there's blood and sexual references a lot. When the disclaimer came up when I was first watching the first episode, that came up before the first episode, that apparently it was meant to be for mature audiences, I generally just sat there in confusion and laughed because honestly, you can remove all the blood and sexual references from the show and this could generally just be a mediocre kids cartoon that would air on Cartoon Network that would keep the little ones busy. Hell, I'd probably watch this show if it aired when I was 12 years old. The show also treats its audience like children, especially that one scene, because apparently it doesn't think that the mature audience they're trying to appeal to knows what a transgender person is. It really just makes me think that this was meant to be a kid show, but they changed it at the last minute for whatever reason. So one of my final thoughts on High Guardian Spice, well, it just frustrates me because of all the good ideas and concepts they have. They choose to explore none of them at worst, and at best, they only delve a bit into them and never touch them again. I don't think it's a bad show or as awful as people are making it out to be, because I've seen much worse, much, much worse. Do I recommend you watch High Guardian Spice? Eh, not really. You're not missing out on anything good or extraordinary. It's not a hidden gem, but... Honestly, maybe you could find some enjoyment here and there if you watch it with a couple of mates. Now, seeing as this is a review, you're probably wondering what my final score for this show is. Out of 5? Out of 10? Maybe out of 100? Well, 
Take it away, IGN. There's just so much game here to mess around with and enjoy. And if you've ever been a fan that got burnt out in the franchise, or are finally looking to jump in for the first time, there's no finer point than Black Ops 2. For more on Call of Duty, Black Ops 2, keep it at IGN. In actuality, this show's like a 4 or a 5 out of 10. Also, the theme song sucks. Yeah.